Hello and welcome to the PhD Life Raft podcast. I'm Emma Brzezinski and today I am talking to the human dynamo that is Tara Brabanson. Tara has a wealth of experience in supervising PhD researchers. Uh, today we are talking particularly around procrastination, but we're also talking about the real gift that it is to work on a PhD. So I do hope you enjoy this episode. It is a lovely and very good early morning to you and a good evening to you. I was just saying that you have just, if you could go up any further in my um, estimation, you have because it's 6.30 in the morning, people, and oh, already your energy is on fire and I'm loving it. I am well, so... Emma, I get up at 2 a.m., you know that, so this is, in fact, the middle of my day, so what? I'm thrilled and I'm ready to rumble, girlfriend. Come on. Right. Okay. Amazing. So that's a whole nother episode. So we've agreed to what we're going to talk about, but now I need to talk to you about getting off to it two o'clock. Um, okay, right. I'm just gonna let that sink in. So, <laughs> so um, you are so amazing, and I really love, love, love the work you do. You have fantastic YouTube videos which are so informative and supportive and motivational for PhD students. And if people don't know about those already, we will have that in the show notes because they they will want to find out when we've we've finished our conversation. Um, and so I said, would you come and, and talk to us? And you said yes. And I am so grateful. And I'm just so excited. Um, Me too. So I'm thrilled. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. So we let's always go. we always start with um with asking uh about your own story. So can you tell us a little bit about your journey through postgrads? Education. Look, I can. It's a, it's a weird degree story. So I'll just do the, the quick micro narrative of it. So I have three bachelor degrees with honours and all the rest of it, first class honours and all the rest of it, a couple of graduate diplomas. I've just finished my fourth master's degree and I have a PhD. So I've actually done more qualifications since I completed my PhD in 1994, 1995 than I did before then. So my journey through education it has been an inspirational and a powerful one for me because it's allowed me to come to every day of my life with intellectual generosity to know that I have the gift and the ability to learn from great people. So I've been able to do all these wonderful degrees and I, I just finished my Masters of Leadership on the weekend. So my oh, fourth man, Masters was finished on, on the weekend. But my PhD was done very, very early. I was pretty young. I'd done a research master's before then, and I had completely incompetent uh, supervision. Uh, a bloke mm. just checked out. He was dreadful. Look, not only was he an incompetent supervisor, he was an incompetent human. And so the great <laughs> gift of having an incompetent human as your supervisor is you have to learn how to supervise yourself. Mm. And so as a very young woman, I learnt to be robust and I learned to be a bit of a, a self-starter or a self-sourcing pudding, if you like. And I got a job, my first full-time academic job, halfway through, actually earlier than that, uh, in the PhD. And so I had to finish the PhD while in full-time work because if I didn't get the PhD, I wouldn't be able to get the next contract, get the next yeah. job. So yeah. the PhD was an experience for me where I learnt the profound problems that can exist in international higher education, the problems that can exist in our universities, the incompetent old blokes that tend to dominate our universities. And can I say there are lots of incompetent old women as well, so and non-binary identifying individuals. But, you know, my initial experience because of my age, I'm 52, is, you know, I, I was secondary socialised through incompetent old blokes. And so I, I got to understand that and understand that if, if I was going to make it, and I come from a tough working class background, neither my parents finished high school, my grandfather couldn't read all right. So if I was going to make it, I was going to have to make it through just slog and hardjacker and hard work and taking risks. So I suppose that's my PhD story. Is that helpful, Emma? Oh, amazing and inspirational in terms of 
and the thing that really shone out there was when you were talking about intellectual generosity, because I think that absolutely characterizes your work, that that generosity in there. Um, and yeah, I, I can see how, although it's painful to, to hear that actually that came from a place of somebody not looking after you, um, but you certainly give that energy out to other people. And, um, and also, Emma, the, the tragedy of international higher education since then, because obviously that was a long time ago, yeah, yeah. that was nearly 30 years ago, is that higher education's got worse since then. Yes. You know, I've yes. worked with colleagues around the world who have killed themselves, right? So I don't glamorise international yeah. higher education at all, but I hope one person coming to work being kind, being compassionate, um, you know, one person can't make a difference. We need to change this system. Uh, but if if people like you and people like me leave this system, then then we got no hope. So we've got to dig in, I think. Yeah, and I, th- I think that sense of your kindness and, oh, I just, I love it. I love it. Um, so now, because you have such wisdom, we're going to pick your brains. Yes, um, let's go for it. So a topic, there was there were so many things that obviously that you could talk about, but I I asked because I love the way that you approach this. I asked if you could talk to us a little bit about procrastination. It's a big thing for a lot of PhD students. Um so can you tell us a little bit about your take on procrastination? Yes, and, and Emma, as most of the vlogs that I've done, and I've done a recent one, say, on writer's block as well, uh, I come to procrastination and writer's block and these concepts uh, not having personally experienced it. So I think not having it as a personal experience helps me because that's not my lens or positionality, so I have to use the research. Yes. And so for me, um, procrastination is odd. I, I, it seems irrational to me and it seems sort of illogical to me. I understand why it happens and we'll come to that in a second. But one thing I know at 52 years of age is that life is precious. Life is incredibly precious and we, we need to get on. We need to push ourselves. We need to motivate ourselves to achieve our goals so we can make a living, so we can survive, so we can make it better for the next generation of people, right? And so therefore procrastination seems odd to me because it's irrational. But again, a lot of what's happening in international higher education at the moment is irrational. So why would procrastination be any surprise? And the reason procrastination exists in the doctoral space is because doing a PhD is incredibly difficult. It's incredibly difficult. Only 1% of the world's population have a PhD. So this is a gift. This is a privilege. But don't for one moment think that this is easy or straightforward. If it was easy, everybody would have it. So obviously when anything difficult in life happens, like you've got to exercise, you've got to not eat cheesecake, you know, all these things in life that you you want to do and you just can't, um, you, you have to make hard decisions. So procrastination is completely rational, really, in some way because the PhD is hard. So what we need to do to manage procrastination is break the PhD down and stop thinking about 100,000 words, frightening, scary, going to examiners, an oral examination, frightening, 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 frightening. frightening. Um, What you've got to do is you've got to feel the fear and do it anyway, all right? So it's a privilege to do a PhD. And so procrastination, if you like, melts away if we deploy a few techniques Time orientation and task orientation are my two go-to tropes and ideas. Mm -hmm. So time orientation is, say, you're in full-time work. We've got so many students now that are coming to a a PhD later in life. The average age of students that start at Flinders University, where I am at the moment, is 40, 40 years of age. So they're in full-time work, caring responsibilities, kids, parents, the whole box and dice. So Time orientation is one way to manage procrastination. So get up in the morning and work for one hour. So get up an hour earlier, give me the time. And that's the great way to avoid procrastination. So don't judge the time, just put in the time. No social media, get all that nonsense out of your life. Being on Facebook won't get you a PhD. Being off Facebook will get you a PhD. So for one hour a day, you don't need to like somebody's random meal that they've prepared and taken a photograph of. Focus on writing with no judgment. So time orientation will handle procrastination. The other way to handle it is task 
orientation. And again, this suits particular people as well at the very start of the thesis or at the end. So give yourself a small task. And it might be writing three paragraphs on this particular book or article. It may be write three paragraphs on this method. So give yourself a discrete, precise task. And I do this on Sunday nights, by the way. Sunday night, I list all the tasks I would like to do. Small, yes. bespoke tasks. This is half an hour. This is an hour. This is 45 minutes. And then you slot the tasks into the available time through the week. So what I'd say to people is if, if you're procrastinating, Ask why, and almost always it comes from fear. Yeah. So start to ask the questions, understand your candidature, understand your enrolment, improve your relationship with your supervisor. Go meta, understand what a PhD is and why you're doing it. And when you've got the what and the why, then the how becomes time and task orientation. And that should solve procrastination. I love it. What I love about what you do is you just make it so clear and simple and manageable. It's like, of course, we can do this. We can do this. And I think that what you're saying there about go meta and really kind of understand the project is yeah. really key as well. Because it yeah. it's, it's understanding what you're entering into, being really honest with yourself, isn't it, in terms of what is it that's going on here with myself? <laughs> yeah, and, that's right. and also, also in my understanding that the PhD is the worst research you'll ever do. Yes, it's yes. not the best. Yes. It's, it's a genre. Yes. It's an oeuvre. Two or three examiners engage with it. Um, and, and so that's what it is. It is like a carpentry apprenticeship. My father was a, a carpenter. Jesus was a carpenter, as he would say. And the point is, when you finish your carpentry apprenticeship, you build a table, yes. right? It's not the best table you'll ever build, but they're checking, can this bloke build a table? And that's what a PhD is. Can this human being do a thesis, thanks, in, out, shake it all about? And that's why 98 99% of PhDs are, are passed, the overwhelming majority of pass. The only way you won't pass is if you don't finish. So that's why it's the attrition that's such a tragedy of doctoral education because people stop themselves yes, from passing. And procrastination is the way to do that. Yes, absolutely. And as you say, a lot of it is to do with fear and going into that place of paralysis so that yes. you're not. And, and as you say, often it, the, the fear is linked with with perfectionism in terms of I'm yes. not going to do it because I can't do it perfectly. And like yeah. you say, you just got to build a table. Come on. <laughs> you just got to build a table. And look, and perfectionism is just a nightmare. I think that's the why I've never had procrastination because I'm not a perfectionist. It's like you just got to make a living. You just write an article, put one article in front of the other, put one chapter in front of the other. And, and just move forward. As long as you've got momentum, as long as you've got moving forward in your life, that's success. If you're waiting for the perfect step, you're waiting for the perfect chapter, you're going to be dead. Mm. So have, have a good go. All I yes. want people to do is have a good go and that's success. Yes, yes, yes. There's a brilliant quote, is there? I don't know if it's apocryphal or, or assigned to someone, but they said, um, "How did you, it's a writer who used to was a pro prolific writer?" And they said, "How did you write so much?" And he said, "I just lowered my standards." <laughs> yeah. So I think, so I think there is that sense of, as I say, being honest with yourself and what is going on, and then having compassion for yourself because it's it's it, like like you're saying that actually. You can you can allow yourself some slack. You don't have to be. You don't. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, oh, Absolutely that. not. And look, if I'd waited to be perfect, my first drafts are dreadful, Emma. Yes. My first drafts are an embarrassment to humanity. Yes. My tenth drafts are embarrassments to humanity. It's. But again, the only audience for those drafts is me. Exactly. And by the time anyone else is reading it, we've had some good draft and work happening here. That's it. I actually often write to myself at the beginning, no one else is going to see this, Emma. And then you could just and then I could just start writing. Because Spot on. <laughs> Spot on. It's just for me. So Hashtag think, no judgment. <laughs> I like that very much. I like that very much. So I think I think 
for people out there, and I say it's very common, procrastination is really common. So if that is what's going on for you, know that you are absolutely not alone. There's so many no. people out there doing that. And yeah. I think what, Tara, what you're saying about thinking about the what and the why and then how in terms of time orientation, task yeah. orientation, and getting real with yourself, really, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yeah. yes, yeah. yeah, and just and and enjoying the experience. I think we forget, Emma. We we get all lost. I think, particularly, you know, post Donald Trump, we get lost in these complaint cultures. So we complain about supervisors, we complain about yes. our universities, yes. we complain about capitalism, and in some ways, that is stopping students from writing. Yes, the system is flawed, but if we can come to the PhD, recognize the gift and the privilege of being able to contribute to knowledge. If we can hold on to that, then I think procrastination melts away because the privilege of the space we're in starts to manifest. Oh, yes to that, 100%. And this sense of this is an, really a golden opportunity to enjoy yourself, to kind of go, yeah. this is what I want to look at. Like yeah. ideally, that is, that's, that's, that's what is potentially out there for you. Um, oh, Absolutely. Absolutely. What a what a gift it is, Emma, to actually for once in your life be able to stand for something. Yes. You know, in a time where endlessly, you know, there's insta influences and all of this. And the PhD allows us as clever people to stand for something. And how fantastic is that? It is fantastic. That's it's like yeah, 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 yeah. Um awesome. So we've got all of that on board, and yes. but but you're not off the hook yet because I'm going to ask you more. I'm going to I'm ask excited. you for now for a top tip or some top tips that um, for people to take away. And it might be I, I'm being a bit cheeky now because usually I ask top tips related to the theme, but I know you've got so much good stuff to share with doctoral students. So um, it could be around pro procrastination, but it might be that you've got some other top tips that you want to share with. Um, people who are on that doctoral journey yeah look I, I've only really got only one intervention changed my life and changed most of my students lives and that is get your carcass up early right get the old bod up now the thing is if you're asleep you don't write your thesis and of course if you're asleep and of course we've got all these colleagues with kids with partners with relationships with families and with full-time work that you know if you're if you're waiting for somebody to make time for you to do a PhD you'll be dead before that time is made available so you have to create the space in your life and so what you do and what I did when I went to Wellington for my first job, dreadful supervision and just had to get on with it, is I'd always got up at four and I started to get up at three when I had my first job. Now I get up at two for other reasons. But so I get my carcass up. And when I get my carcass up, I then work hard because, like, I could be sleeping, but I work very hard for two hours. And so that's when I do my research. And if you do that, if you do two great hours a day, that's how you finish a PhD. So everything else about motivation and stuff, if, if you just get your body up, if you change that one bit of your behaviour, then all the motivation and everything else will follow that action. So get up. Amazing. Amazing. Because we just had someone else on who was talking about the 5am club and yeah. how that had, that had right. changed for her. But I say you are super hardcore because you are 2 a.m. club, right? 2 a.m. I, I, I think they call us the extreme larks. And you know, you think no. you think that you might have a, a difficult life. I've I've just married a wonderful physicist called uh, Jamie Quinton, and he had a normal life before he met me. And now <laughs> he gets up at 2 a.m. now. He gets up at 2 a.m. as well. Bless him. And he comes to the gym at 4:30 with me, but he gets up at 2 a.m. and he's done a master's degree during the last year and he's produced more articles in the last year than in the last two so it is a transformative act for people's careers amazing that's it, that's it. I'm, that's um, it. I'm, I'm i really am gonna sit with that i uh i'm yeah that is uh that's a challenge that is a challenge um, and, and remember it doesn't have don't aim for 2am aim for four 
Right. Aim for five. Give me an hour, Emma. So right. wherever you are now in your life, colleagues, if you're getting up at nine o'clock in the morning, bless you. I've had students, hello, Dr. Leanne McRae, who are the night people. I supervise the night people <laughs> and night people, you know, get up at 9 a.m. So with Leanne, we got her up at 7.30. And she finished her thesis in just under three years while in full-time work. Amazing. Amazing. Tara, thank you so much for all of that. I think thank you for, yeah, for your generosity. Thank you for all the work you do. I say in the show notes, we will put um, links to your just library of inspiration. (laughs) And... um, uh, and also the details of how people can find out more about you and the work that you do. Thank you so much. And thank you, um, yeah, for just, for sharing, for sharing. Thank you. Oh, and Emma, thank you for all that you do. It is a wonderful podcast series and it is changing the world. Sonic Media changes the world and you are part of that project. So I thank you for all that you do. Bless you. And thank you all for listening. Mm-hmm.